Hi, this is Dave. Welcome back to another installment of Dr. Dave's Diversions. In this uh, video, what we're going to do is dive deep into some ancient Unix history. What we're going to do is travel back in time to run uh, research Unix, or what's sometimes called ancient Unix, on the PDP-11 as it was in the 70s. And the reason I want to do this is I want to do a short series of videos about uh, weird or unusual versions of BASIC. Not a lot of people know uh, may know that uh, that Unix has BASIC from the beginning. And Ken Thompson wrote a version of BASIC circa 1971 that was in version one of, of Research Unix, or the first edition, and uh, lasted all the way through the, the last edition that was on the PDP-11, the seventh edition. So what we're going to do is uh, revisit running uh, the seventh edition of Unix circa 1979 on the PDP using emulation, I'm going to be running it on my Mac. So that's the plan for today. So let me give you a little context. So BASIC was created about 1966, uh, I believe at Dartmouth University, and was known at the time that they were running Unix, but usually you don't hear about BASIC being associated with Unix. So why would there have been a BASIC in early Unix? Well, we've learned from from Ken Thompson's boss, Doug McElroy, uh, in, a, in a document that he wrote called A Research Unix Reader Annotated Excerpts from the Programmer's Manual 1971 to 1986. On page 10 of that paper about the C compiler, uh, Doug McElroy writes, as a testbed for floating point routines in version one, Thompson wrote BAS, a basic-like interpreter. It survived as long as we used PDP-11s. So, uh, so the initial inspiration, um, Ken Thompson has said, you know, he, he was originally writing an assembler. In fact, he wrote this basic in assembler on the PDP. And in this 1970s era, most of Unix was written uh, in assembler. And they had converted some of it to C. This is one of the tools that was written in assembler. Uh, Ken Thompson himself has said the other language that he thought was important to have was Fortran. So what we have later is that Dennis Ritchie writes C, um, and the first version of that appears in version 2 of Unix in 1972. And as they're preparing for that, they're writing functions, say, for instance, uh, exponential functions or sine and the trigonometric functions. They're testing it using this interactive BASIC. So all through the 70s, there was this version of BASIC on the PDP in Unix. So how is it that we're going to be able to run uh, the original version? Luckily, what I found is that a gentleman named Michael Ringard uh, in Denmark had written a, an operating system called SanOS, the storage area network operating system, and he was playing around with PDP-11, with the PDP-11 emulator and the version 7 of Unix, and he created a CD-ROM image, a bootable CD-ROM that you can run on PCs that will boot right into the version 7, of, the seventh edition of Unix. So I'm gonna show you uh, how, to, how to get that up and running. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to run it under QEMU. So I'm actually going to be running it under Mac OS. So let's switch over to the screen and uh, go through that installation and then into BASIC. And, and stick around afterwards because I'll come back and I'll give you some more uh, context about why I'm showing you this old version of BASIC and, uh, and what I learned about it by playing around with it for a couple of days. So before we can run Ken Thompson's BASIC from the 70s, we have to first uh, get uh, get Unix running on the PDP-11. So the way we're going to do that, um, it turns out it's rather easy. So here I am on Mac OS in a shell. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to fetch the uh, ISO image from here. And then we're going to unzip PDP11.zip leaving us with pdp11.iso, and then we're going to run QEMU in cursus mode, and that's just a convenience instead of running it at graphics mode so that we can easily cut and paste, for instance, basic source code into the emulator, and tell it to boot from that CD-ROM image. All right, so let's type a question mark here. It gives us the step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. First, it says type a B. At the at prompt, type boot. At the colon prompt, type rl0, 0, 0, rl2 unix. At the pound prompt, type control d and log in as root. 
All right, so we're on uh, seventh edition of Unix here, as it what would have been circa 1979. Uh, there's no uname command on old versions of Unix like that. Um, we could do things like uh, ls the bin directory over to user games, for instance. Look at the games that are there. We can run. It. We could run. Uh, fortune command, uh, various things to play around with. Uh, one way, I mean, you could tell that this is an old version of Unix is, look for instance, um, try to create a file. Let's create a file with many characters in the file name. And there it is truncated to 14 characters. If we look at the directory itself, in old versions of Unix, there was instead of having a function to read the directories, you read the directory itself. Run od-c on dot, and you can literally see the, the name of that file in there, truncated to 14 characters. So the first, team, first 14 characters is the dot, the second 14 characters is the dot dot, and it was just a concatenated set of 14 character um, records in the directory that meant the file names. And you can, so thus, in this version of Unix, you can only have 14 character file names. But now we're ready to uh, to go back to uh, what we were intending to do and run basic. I'm going to go over the temp directory. And I've prepared a couple of uh, source files for basic to show. So the first one, let's look at, we're going to calculate the number of inches traveled per nanosecond for light. So it's a simple equation. If we run that in basic, inches per nanosecond comes up with an answer. We could just as easily have typed it interactively. So like other versions of BASIC, it serves as a simple calculator. Another example I have is, let's say you borrowed $1,000 at 6% interest for five years. So how much is the compound to interest for that? So we'll run BASIC on 6% five years, 1,000 USD, and comes up with an answer. So we can see it can be used as a calculator that takes multiple lines of input. Um, in these examples, we're not using the you know basics line numbering convention. So let's go to a more complicated example. So uh, let's look at the 99 bottles of beer on the wall song, words that a program that can emit the words of that song. So I've written a few versions of that, and I'll use those to show the, the characteristics of, of uh, Ken Thompson's BASIC. So I'll run BASIC and we'll load the first version, 99bottles.base, and list the source code. So Ken Thompson's BASIC has, uh, has no string functions. It understands strings, but you can't manipulate them or examine them. That's not uncommon in simple basics. There were other versions of basic uh, from the early 70s that ran in small amounts of memory that didn't have string functions. And it's not, you know, uh, it doesn't keep it from being used. It just means you have to be a little more verbose with how you create your strings. The other thing is, I'm not using them here, but the but Ken Thompson's basic has arrays. Uh, and it and in this case um, I'm going to use some simple control structures in this case the go to to run this program so you can see in so you can see in uh, Ken's basic here's a simple variable assignment it's just in, uh, the first four characters of the variable are significant so we're saying the bottles to 99 um, curiously um, it doesn't have a way to, uh, in a print statement, to say don't print the new line. Instead, it has a different command prompt. So prompt is exactly like print, but doesn't print the new line at the end, as if you're going to prompt someone for something, and then you can say uh, have them have them enter it. it again, do it, we don't use it here, but we could have instead of uh, instead of setting the amount number of bottles, we could have its input, and it uses the uh, the built-in function expr to do that. So instead of input. Ken Thompson's original basic has prompt and expr. Other than that, now it's starting to look like things we're used to seeing in basic. 
we can test with if, we can test for equality or not, and act accordingly. If we run this program, it does what we'd expect and it's the words of the song. And of course, 99 bottles, the, the just the ending of the song is different, so the, you're testing out the conditional structure there. So that's one short way to use Ken Thompson's basic to do something and kind of gives you a flavor for the language. In this case, I just use go to to do the loop, but it also has uh, some more uh, control structures. So let's look at another version. So the second version I have 99 bottles to that base. If we list that out. This uses a for loop. So the curious thing about um, the BAS command in early Unix is that the for loop can only count upwards. It has no step option to step down. So if we're going to use it to count from 99 down to one, we have to uh, count, we have to count, in this case, then we decided to count up from negative 99 to negative one. Now, if we look at this first line here, it looks really curious, right? It says underscore 99, underscore one. Well, another curiosity about Ken Thompson's basic is that the, uh, the underscores used to negate a numeric value. And one could guess the reason that he probably did that was it's easier to write an interpreter or a compiler that doesn't have multiple purposes for the minus sign. It's not both a, a, a binary function where it takes two operands like in two minus one and also the negation operation, which is a unary operation. Here, the underscore is the unary operation and the minus sign is what you'd expect otherwise. So that's certainly a curiosity, and I've only found one other programming language uh, that has that particular characteristic. It was written in circa 1990. So, um, so there we're going to so we're going to loop from negative 99 to negative one, and every time we mention bottles, then we're going to use the negation operator to flip the sign of that so that we get the positive number. So that's one of the curiosities. Other than that, this is a pretty straightforward implementation of how you sing the words to the song using a for loop and basically test if the number of bottles is one, then you make the word, the word bottles singular instead of plural, but fairly straightforward. And it produces the same words of the song than the, the earlier version did. So let's move on to the third version. So the other nice thing about Ken Thompson's basic is it has functions and uh, you're used to probably the go sub and return in basic. Uh, Ken Thompson's functions are written are implemented sort of like go sub and return, but you can pass an arbitrary number of arguments to them. So let's look at this version of the program and see what it's doing. So the very first thing at line nine here, it says go to 100. Well, that's super weird, right? Why would you do that? Well, you do that because what I've done here is use the line numbers 10 through 65 to implement my functions. And because the functions are indifferentiable from normal statements, um, we have to skip past them so that they don't execute in line. So the first thing I'm doing is skipping past the functions. The other way you could do it is put the functions at the end, and then near the end of the program, you'd have to jump past the functions again so that don't get, get executed at the end. Let's look at the first function. At line 10, we have a function that says, if the first argument is not equal to one, then prompt s. So this is the one that has to do with making the word bottles, singular or plural, it says if it's not only one bottle, then make the word bottles plural. And then it returns. Well, in, in Ken Thompson's basic, the line number is the name of the function. So if we look down here, for instance, at line 120, I'm calling that function 10, which causes to go up to line 10 and pass an, uh, the negated version of bottles on underscore bottles as the first argument. So we get a numeric first argument, and then you see it tested up here. So pretty interesting, right? And, and a kind of a neat way to, it makes sense if like with go sub, the going to those subroutines, it's kind of makes sense to have the line numbers be the names of the functions. But the powerful thing is you can pass any number of arguments to those functions and then test them. And then the other function I have here starting at line 42 and going to line 65 um, says, if the first argument is not equal to zero, then print the argument. Otherwise say the words no more, because in the song you say no more instead of saying zero bottles of beer. And that's called down here. So other than that, it's straightforward. It uses the same for loop as before, uh, but it calls on these functions instead of doing the tests in line to make it a little more modular. And if we run it, it emits the words of the song just as we expect. So 
So other than being slightly more verbose because you can't, for instance, say multiple actions on the same line, it doesn't have that convention where you can say a, a colon and then do something different on the same line. It's a pretty straightforward version of ASIC and actually quite powerful. Uh, um, other than not having the ability to do string uh, operations, it has a more powerful uh, function um, syntax and, and implementation than many early basics. And remember, this this was available in 1971 on the PDP-11, so less than when I was you know, two years old or something like that. Wow, so that's, uh, that's Ken Thompson's basic. Uh, you can still run it today in the PDP-11 environment on modern hardware. Uh, I had really I had a lot of fun playing around with it and discovering from its terse man page, uh, you know, all of those features in there. For instance, de just deciphering how those functions worked from five lines in the man page was, was insane. So really enjoyed that. One thing I certainly did notice while playing around with Ken Thompson's BAS command, the basic dialect that he wrote, is it certainly has some rough edges, and it, that's admitted right in the man page. In fact, the man page from version seven says it has been known to give core images. And sure enough, um, I playing around with it, especially with trying to learn how the function calls worked, I got it to core dump a number of times. Another way I found you can get it to core dump, which was really curious, is that I was uh, reading other versions in the man page. Looking back at the version five man page for basic, there were a couple more commands. One was draw and one was display. And it said it can draw lines onto the Tektronix 611 display. Um, on dev vt0. Well, that PDP emulator does not have a dev vt0, nor emulate the Tektronix 611, but those calls are still in there. So if you call the draw function in basic, uh, you can get it to crash. If you call display, you can get it to crash. But those are just in there and just not documented in the in the version we're running here. I mentioned um, when we were looking at the screen that the, the notion of using the underscore to negate a, a, a numeric value, that's also in the J uh, programming language from 1990. So if you know of other places where that might have originated from, how can happen to choose that, like something from the 60s or something, uh, please let us know in the comments. Uh, if you've used uh, Ken Thompson's BASIC or another version of BASIC under Unix, uh, please share your story uh, there. You know, it's not common to use it in, in that environment. I first used Pascal in the Unix environment, and uh, this version of BASIC was not available on System 5, which is the one that I started with in 1988. But if you've used BASIC there or whatever, you know, sh share that with us. So, um, so what's going to, I'm going to continue with um, some other, uh, some other old historic Unix stuff and have a, a, a treat coming up for you with another uh, basic language, basically where this evolved to in Unix uh, next. So subscribe if you want to catch that one. Uh, but otherwise, uh, take care. I'll see you next time.